Okay, here I'm going to go over different types of firearm ammunition. And while these all may look very different, there are some similarities and some consistencies. And I'll go over those specific terms so you can be able to talk whatever part of the ammunition you're talking about, you can be accurate. So first off, ammunition uh, can be abbreviated ammo uh, as a material fired, scattered, dropped, or denoted from any weapon. You can see a bunch of ammunition here, as it is here. You notice that there are some different ones. These rounds here with the little red at the very end, those are called tracer rounds. I'll go over those in another video. The purpose of ammunition is to project a force against a selected target and have an effect. Usually not always uh, lethal. So I don't think it's always lethal, uh, but a lot of times in this case with the images projected here, yes, you're looking at probably being lethal. The most iconic example of ammunition is the firearm cartridge, which includes all the components required to deliver the weapon effectively in a single package. So we have a bullet, we have a shell um, casing. So these are independent terms and these are different. So a lot of times they get mixed up. The ones located here on the screen, these are all bullets. These are all the shell casings. So if you're going through a crime scene and you find something like this and people say they found, found bullets, no, technically you found shell casings. The bullets would be located here. So again, just be aware of the terms that you're using shell casings versus a bullet. Now the cartridge here in this image uh, consists of a bullet, which would be number one, then the case, which is located right here, and that holds all the parts together. Uh, inside the case would be the propellant, which is, for example, gunpowder. Uh, and then we have the rim, which is the very end portion here, and that provides the extractor, the fireman, a place to grip the casing and remove it once fired. And at the very bottom, kind of center here, underneath here, we would have the primer, which ignites the propellant. Now the bullet, specifically, is a typically referred to as the end point here. So when we're looking at a bullet, we're really looking at kind of that end point. Uh, the actual bullet portion is limited only to what we call the projectile. Um, so a lot of times we call this the bullet, that's inaccurate. This is the only, only bullet. Remember, it's that only limited to that projectile portion. Then we have the case. So that holds, again, all the parts of the cartridge together. The cartridge without a projectile is called a blank. Now, in the different types of cartridges, and kind of, uh, they're not always all together. They are served different purposes. So, for example, if we have a cartridge here uh, that's completely inert, meaning it contains no active primer and also no propellant, that's called a dummy. So that would be something used just to kind of represent the same size, uh, but it contains no primer, no propellant, it's just a dummy. When it's failed to ignite uh, or shoot off the projectile, it's called a dud, meaning there's something wrong with all those components. It didn't work together. It's a dud. It didn't fire off. Then when it ignited but failed to sufficiently push the projectile out of the barrel, it's called a squib. That could be for a variety of reasons. It could be a lack of propellant. could be an inaccurate primer. Uh, but these are some terms given if at a crime scene you find kind of something that you know failed to ignite or pull through the barrel if you find it within the barrel that could be called a squib just for example now the rims you mentioned that lower portion uh down down at the very base that provides the extractor the firearm a place to grip the casing and remove it from the chamber you can see different rims here with different calibers uh, but that they all serve the same purpose now, center fire and rim fire. So these are two different types. We see center fire here and a rim fire located right here. Center fire cartridge, as the name implies, is a centrally located primer held within the recess of the case head. Often have about six, 65,000 PSI max pressure. Uh, the rim fire uh, priming is popular solution because uh, before center fire priming was perfected. So they only have a maximum change of chamber pressure about 40,000 PSI. Uh, they don't have to be quite as precise. Uh, they're a little less powerful, a little less punch, but to get that center fire, really a lot of uh, components had to come together. So before this was perfected, the rim fire. Rim fires are still used today, uh, but really for that accuracy, you can see definitely that center fire um, has that primer located right in the center. That primer I've been talking about, primer when hit and the firearms, uh, the hammer of the primer will hit that, it'll cause it to rapidly burn. That burning gas from the primer will ignite the propellant. So it's kind of that first stage and then the propellant goes. This is an explosion that lights propellant, casting a large explosion, and that large explosion will ultimately propel the bullet down the chamber. 
and out the barrel. That propellant specifically, these propellant gases push the bullet base, uh, causing it to move the path of least resistance, which is down the bore of the barrel. Modern propellants are often uh, smokeless powders composed of nitrocellulose. Some contain nitrocellulose, some contain nitro glycerin, there's a whole bunch of different types, but those are at least the two major ones. They all fall into the same category of propelling, and that's what's actually going to cause the force to force the bullet out the bore of the barrel. Then we have different calibers. So a caliber is a, a specific nominal integral diameter of the gun barrel. So the diameter of the barrel is a way to think about caliber. We see a bunch listed or shown here. We have the 22.22 caliber all the way up to the 50 caliber here. So for example, when we say uh, 22 caliber, the firearm has a barrel diameter of roughly 0 0.22 inches if of the bore. You can see it's a much thinner or smaller diameter than the 50 cal. That is, can, can be measured in kind of inches, or they can also be measured in millimeters. Very common one you may hear is nine millimeter pistol. So that's a barrel as a barrel of nine millimeters. And I have a couple just shown here for comparison. Then lastly, we have the shotgun shell. So shotgun shell um, is a self-contained cartridge often loaded with either multiple metallic shot uh, in this case, they're very small, generally spherical projectiles, or a single large slug. And that can just depend on one kind of large slug, one solid kind of piece of metal, or a bunch of little BBs. The shell consists of paper or plastic tube mounted in the base and primer holding that. And the shots typically contain a small uh, chamber inside the shell casing. And we can see that here. Typically, shotguns are used for, example, bird hunting, where you want to have kind of a little bit of a spread um, to be able to hit the bird with some of the pellets. Or it could be a slug if you're kind of deer hunting, uh, because you're kind of having that target being very specific. So just some basics of firearm ammunition.